Well, my full name is Karsten Krone Karok, and uh, I'm a painter, and I'm also uh, a yogi and a teacher of yoga and meditation. Mm, I guess it was a little bit by accident. I was at a folk high school when I was around 20, maybe, and I had chosen a, a subject that uh, I I decided to quit, and then I needed to find something else to do in that uh, period. And uh, one option was yoga, and then I didn't know what it was, but it sort of inspired me a lot, so I continued. When I was involved with the, the yoga school, where I did my training, or most of my training, uh, they had pictures uh, in the rooms where the living room and the yoga room and all the rooms there were different paintings and somehow they were related to to yoga at least to some degree some of them were made by a painter called Sohan Kwakri which is a well was a personal friend of Swami Janakananda uh, and there were also paintings by modernist masters like Paul Klee and Mark Rothko. And they're not directly related to yoga, but somehow they are anyway. Mm. And looking at them, I mean, I was a painter before yoga, I would say, or yeah, I don't know what started because I mean, as a kid, I, I obviously painted, but I also started with some yoga related stuff already when I was 12, maybe relaxation that worked very well for me somehow. Uh, and then I took up painting more seriously later, obviously. I think I would like to talk about it like this. Uh, meditation somehow is a great inspiration uh, for my paintings, mm. when I meditate, uh, the mind gets very creative. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not only my experience, that's an experience of many people that somehow ideas pop up out of nowhere nearly, or of course, maybe from the unconscious, because of course it needs some material to draw from. Mm -hmm. um, and since I'm interested in painting material uh, related to that pops up and I get ideas and um, sometimes it's like I get a flash uh, of an image and then I try to paint that. Sometimes it's not so clear, sometimes it's more clear. That's one way I, I get inspired by, by meditation, uh, but also more conceptually uh, from looking at tantric art. Uh, I get inspired by the power that I see in those pictures and <clears throat> want to make pictures myself with the same kind of power, I would say. Well, it differs. As I said, sometimes uh, I get a, an idea out of the blue. It can be when I meditate, but also when I bicycle or I see another image and then I want to make something somehow inspired by that. But another way to work with it is also I sit and draw. Maybe I decided I wanted to draw something with triangles and then I sit and play around and somehow uh, something grows from that. I may make one sketch that doesn't really work, then I make another one and I kind of work my way into something I, I want to work with. And also when I start painting, uh, I'm not really sure where I want to go. I pick a color and then I see what happens and then I, decide after that, okay, what needs next. Sometimes I have a strict plan, sometimes it's very playful.
there's certain elements like triangles that mm. I use and also uh, the point that is often in the middle of uh, the paintings uh, or yantras and in in, uh, in yoga they are called bindu and uh, like in in meditation they're they're uh, a symbol of a kind of focus point, you could say, or actually the light of awareness, prakasha, like where the the awareness flows from, you could say. It's not really a point then. Uh, but symbolized by the point. But it's also a, a, another symbol of what you could say, uh, potentiality, like a condensed uh, kind of point with the infinite potentiality, mm -hmm. like uh, like the the what is it called the singularity uh, in the beginning of the universe, the the point of uh, condensed matter that exploded into the whole universe. And also maybe like a, a seed from a plant that then sprouts and grows into a, a tree or another plant. Or the fertilized egg in a womb that becomes a human. It's like the beginning of something that grows. Mm -hmm. And I try to uh, paint that also in an abstract way. So from this point, everything flows and grows, blossoms even. Sure, if you feel drawn to it, I think it's very possible, at least uh, formally, there's the bindu you can focus on, so why not? Uh, but I'm also very interested in, in thinking about how there's just some kind of power or energy in the picture that even if you don't sit and meditate with it, uh, if you put it on your wall and you kind of live with it, it somehow has an influence on you, I think. Hopefully positive. I would say I, I just follow my intuition and what I like myself and what I feel feels right or powerful or harmonious or whatever. Because I, I don't only seek power or dynamism. I, I, I also seek a kind of balance, an equilibrium, uh, silence. So I tr try actually to put both elements into my painting. And uh, if we talk about uh, tantric yoga, the, they have, they have uh, some symbols there that symbolizes those two aspects of life. Uh, they call it Shiva and Shakti. And in an abstract form, it's uh, Shiva is a blue triangle turned up. And uh, Shakti is a red triangle pointed down. And you could say the red triangle is the energy, everything that is ma manifested. Um, and it's dynamic, everything that manifests also it has a beginning and an end, so in that way it's not stable. And a downward pointed triangle is not stable. Mm. That's how we experience it. It's on its point, and then it's not stable. But the other one, Shiva, the blue one, is, is kind of stable. Mm. That's consciousness. Or the, what, what are you saying? Yeah. Uh, our own true nature, so all stillness, this calm thing. So I try to put both in, both the energy. So often, like there's a spiral movement to some degree, at least in in the paintings, uh, symbolizing this unstable or moving thing, and then that's the bindu that symbolizes on. The emptiness in the middle that symbolizes the stillness.
I'm interested in how the world is created, like everything is created from like the singularity before the Big Bang, how something that is so small can become all this, everything. And it's also a, a, a kind of an experience uh, that is mirrored in the meditative process. Like when you really go deep, you kind of go into a, a zero point, a stillness. And then the world appears again when you come out of the meditation. And that's that's quite interesting. Mm. <laughs> so that's something I also try to reflect in my paintings. And another thing related to that is how everything is manifested. Uh, in one way, it can seem very cha chaotic, but if you really look at it, there's often a, a system, systematic way creation happens. Uh, you probably know, know about fractals, mm -hmm. uh, that there's a certain mathematical uh, system that gets repeated and again and again and again and again, and that creates forms and uh, I, I work with that sometimes quite strictly but uh, also just more intuitive like I take a tri triangle and then I repeat it many times uh, because one of the defining elements of a uh, uh, fractal is that it's something called self-similarity that it's the same form that repeats again and again Often it's in smaller and bigger dimensions. <laughs>